core of the book, the heart of the book is these activists, but it's also tells people about the science. It um, has further reading and I hope it's just a useful tool and inspiration to help people on their own activism journey. Hello everyone and welcome to the Drawn to Change the World panel. Drawn to Change the World is the graphic novel put together by 16 artists about 16 climate activists. This is the book every classroom, library, and bookstore around the world needs to get their hands on and read immediately. With amazing art, words of wisdom, timelines, glossary, and resources, this is the perfect guide to get you started on your journey to make a difference. Today, I'm joined by some of the people who created this book for you, and I'll let them introduce themselves. Thank you all for being here, and Emma Reynolds will start with you. Hello, uh, my name's Emma Reynolds. Oh, feedback. <laughs> um, <laughs> I wrote and illustrated uh, one bio in this book, and um, I've also wrote and illustrated Amara and the Bats, which is about bat conservation and um, community action, and I also illustrated Rescue Mrs. Birdley. Kevin Holdsworth. I'm a picture book um, illustrator and author. Um, I live in Germany and um, I will show you a couple books. So um, that's um, Found You, which is about a little boy in a new place who is struggling to make friends. And there's a little bird that makes an appearance and helps him. Um, that one I wrote too. Um, and then story of a book comes out uh, next week. Um, I illustrated this one and it's about like the lifespan of a book and maybe what happens in the end that continues on for the book. Um, and then a few others that I've um, either written and illustrated or just illustrated. Um, this one I'll just mention is about Evelyn Glennie. Um, she's a deaf percussionist who is still making music today and is a total powerhouse. And um, I think people should read her story. So, um, Hi, everyone. Yeah, my name is Anusha Said. Um, I am in Toronto, Canada. I work uh, primarily as a children's illustrator and author and also character designer for animation. Uh, I've done over 40 books now uh, but my author debut that i have over here that's not my name came out last year um and drawn to change was one of the uh graphic novel uh instances that i've gone to work on which was really exciting hi i'm gloria felix i'm a punepecha illustrator and visual development artist i live in guadalajara mexico and um i've mostly done illustration for children's books um here is one that just came out it's uh, about day of the dead and i really love the way it came out it's a very beautiful book <laughs> and here's another one that uh, i'm very happy that i worked on well not ha uh, that happy it's about uh, a girl whose dad is sent to a uh, um, camp in the border because of immigration issues uh, so it's a very good book for kids who are going through that or people who have family going through that um, and yeah so happy to be here hi uh my name is bill masuku uh, i'm an artist and writer from zimbabwe i don't have any of my books with me um i wish i wish, yeah, I wish this was tiktok so you could just hold up and do the little hand thing that they do with the pdfs um, but uh, I've written a bunch of action stories, Razor Man, Captain South Africa, Welcome to Dead World. But I'm really enjoying my next stage in the my work journey, which is getting into children's books, um, uh, nonfiction graphic novels, and storyboarding for animation. Yeah. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Hi, uh, I'm Derek Brooks. I'm currently in Baltimore, uh, Maryland right now, but from Virginia originally. Uh, and uh, I've been working in comics and illustration for, I don't know, I think full time, like about four years now. Um, so I think we're introducing books. Uh, <laughs> I think I'm most known, I guess, now for uh, Bright Family. Uh, it's a series with Epic, uh, an online publisher uh, and subscription service. Um, and then like books that I'm like into, uh, or get into rather, um, of course, Calvin and Hobbes. Uh, 
that's always around. Um, <laughs> my friend has a, a whole basement full of comics, so I've just kind of been digging through that stuff. Um, and uh, I got Frizzy recently. I'm excited to read this. Uh, and also, where I'm coming from, from Brendan, <laughs> I'm sorry, Barbara Brendan Croft. Uh, really cool social commentary and comics. So yeah, that's what I'm into right now. Can you give us a backstory on creating this graphic novel? And for those not familiar, a bit about Kid Lit for Climate. Yes, so where our book uh, began was with something called Kid Lit for Climate. And it all started in 2019. Um, and it basically is all about authors and illustrators for climate justice in solidarity with Youth Climate Strikes, who is the people we make our books for in the first place. Um, so it's hard to kind of might be hard to imagine this right now, but back in early 2019, the climate strikes were coming across to Europe and the UK in a big way, but they weren't seen in a positive light at first. And I distinctly remember this video of a man shouting at this young girl, telling her to go back to school. And it really uh, angered me that they weren't being taken seriously. So I thought, what can I do in my field to make a, a difference? Um, and I came up with this uh, on, on a heat wave in February and came up with a logo, made up made all the social handles and put up a brief on my website for people to make a climate protester in solidarity with these young people. And I thought maybe I'll get about 30 and I'll put them in one big image together for the first global climate strike. But it went um, absolutely viral. And within what, two weeks, I've been sent a thousand illustrations from all over the world, which is super, super cool. Um, and as far as I know, it is the first uh, global illustrated climate campaign um, around. Uh, within six months, we've had over 3,000 illustrations from over 50 countries. And we also protest uh, in person. Um, the Kidlet community took our signs out to the street for the global climate strikes. Um, and this one was the biggest climate uh, strike in history, which was 7.6 million people from over 185 countries around the world. So it was really amazing seeing everyone come together and people had somewhere to kind of put their um, thoughts about it and, um, you know, their fears and their passion for it. And art's a really powerful way to bring people together in that way. So we kept protesting. Um, and just before COVID lockdowns, uh, that was the last one in February 2020 uh, for a while. Um, and then things started to change where I'm from in the UK. So the government are making it extremely hard to peacefully protest. They basically made it illegal, which um, interestingly is like some of the countries I wrote about in, in the graphic novel. Um, so the kind of mood has changed slightly. It's kind of very defiant um, piece of protest as a human right and things like that. Um, so yeah, uh, Kidlet for Climate, there's, I've lost count because the hashtag went uh, had a life of its own. So there's around 10,000 illustrations to date, I'd say, but I don't know the exact number. Um, I'm just going to flick through some and people can pause the video to look at them closer or you can check out the hashtag on Instagram. Um, just some of the amazing pieces from acclaimed illustrators and uh, emerging illustrators across the world. So it was really amazing um, seeing illustrators that I admired take part, but also being introduced to people I didn't know. And some of these illustrators have actually worked on uh, the graphic novel, which is really cool. So I did know some of their work before, but some of them introduced me to them um, through the campaign. So Margarita ended up um, illustrating Arshak's comic, which is really, really lovely. I love the blue palette. It really fit with the mood. Victoria ended up um, illustrating Dara McAnulty's comic with her partner Federico. Devon uh, illustrated Daphne, who's here today. Erin Hunting from Australia, illustrated Jean Hinchcliffe. Um, so I also thought it would be interesting to show you how the pitch was originally. Um, so I originally pitched it as um, one illustration on one side and then information on the other side. And that was in 2019. And then our editor who eventually uh, took the book on said, how about we make the bias into comics? And I said, that's an amazing idea. And so I did the pitch again and reworked it into a comic. This is my Jamie Margolin like sample spread. Um, so some of those panels ended up being in the final one, obviously illustrated by someone else, by Tio. Um, and eventually she loved it. Um, we got a book deal in 2020 
and that was not announced till 2022, publishing very slow. Uh, so this, <laughs> so the next stage was the research stage. So in early 2021, we just moved house, all the boxes everywhere, and I'd shaved my head for charity. Um, so this was in deep in lockdown, uh, researching and reading everything I could about every activist. Um, and full gremlin mode. I spent most of the time with my hoodie, <laughs> researching for several months. Um, so I'd do sketches around the words. I I read everything and watched everything I could find about each activist. I trolled the social media and I interviewed and messaged all the activists that I could, which was about half of them that I was able to get in touch with. Um, so for every comic, we only had four pages um per activist i snuck in an extra two for greta because i was the author and like there was a bit more time um it was a bit cheeky but i got an extra two pages just to spread out but all the others i had to make into just four pages and that was the trickiest part was condensing all of this information that had filled an entire notebook into four pages for the artist so even though i wasn't illustrating them all i actually did thumbnail everything to check it literally could fit and then I reverse engineered that into a script and I didn't send the artist these thumbnails um, because I wanted them to make it their own, but I sent them the script version and these are just live on my computer. And it's interesting seeing how different um, people's eventual comics were can. So this one's um, pretty rough. This is what um, became Anusha's um, comic, which I made into a script. So for mine, I did uh, Greta. This is the sketches, color rough, and the final just to show the progress and throughout the process there was a lot of checking everyone's sketches and giant pdfs multi-page checking every single thing making lots of comments um with the copy editors and things it was a very very long process but i'm so happy with what we've done and i'm so proud of what we've made together and i can't wait for everyone to see the final book and chat more to everyone Um, yeah, so I, I first um, met Emma through the hashtag Kidlit for Climate, like she said, and um, was just really taken by her enthusiasm and determination. Like she just, she, you, well, you know, she just pulls you in. And so I um, was really excited when she contacted me to um, do this feature on Daphne Frias. And so I, I read about Daphne and um, contacted her and um, just learned a little bit about her story and how, so she considers herself, um, so she, she says she is proudly disabled and she focuses her energy on disability, accessibility, and how that meets with activism. And so often um, those who are disabled are left out of that um, equation. And her voice and being able to focus on that issue, it, you know, it, it does a lot for other people um, who who would be able to not, you know, um, um, access uh, care when they need to, or, um, I mean, she hasn't even been able to attend certain things because maybe there was a loss of power and her chair wouldn't be able to charge. Um, or she couldn't get out of her house. Um, there's there's all kinds of things that that people who aren't disabled wouldn't even think about. And um, and so Daphne's voice gives us this ability to see what it's like to be in her position. And um, and she has such a strong voice, and has been. And she's you know, and she's a young person who's been um, speaking out since she was. Um, probably a teenager, it seems to me. And um, so she grew up in West Bronx in New York. And um, she just noticed that um, her neighborhood and neighborhoods around her were the ones where um, power plants, recycling plants, um, busy highways, all of these things were focused um, in her area of the city. And it was just very clear that this was an intentional Thing done in the planning of you know of New York City and where certain people live, and um, and she gives voice to that. And I just I think she is such a she is such a powerhouse. Um, and so it was really um, awesome to to look into her story and to be inspired by her because 
um, she's, uh, she's a very interesting person. She just survived cancer as well. Um, yeah, it's, so go look her up. Um, I, I think it's, uh, it's a good thing to actually look up all of these activists and see the different things that they're working on and then go and look into how, you know, you can plug into them because it's a, it's a good first step. So. So I've known uh, Emma for years and years and years through like online friendships. And so uh, when I was first reached out about this project in like late 2020, uh, first I was so excited to hear that Kid Live for Climate had grown so much that it had developed into a graphic novel. I was I had to jump at I I had to work on this. Um, and so I was told about who I'd be working on, um, and it is a climate climate activist called Iqbal Badruddin from Pakistan, where I'm from. Um, and so I was really drawn to the story because um, not only because of the cultural connection, but his story was really inspiring. Essentially, um, in the in 2010, uh, Pakistan had experienced devastating floods. And he, uh, when he was younger, I think he was 19, he had read about it and he learned about the environmental impact of like what, how it had been causing these floods um, and how he could try to uh, make a difference within his community. And just like in general, like people in the community didn't really either like believe in um, climate change or uh, people didn't really care about it. And so he, along with his friends, really tried to uh, protest to uh, educate people about it. He was really inspired by other climate activists around the world. Um, and yeah, I was just really inspired by his story. And I um, tried to um, really highlight that within my own illustrations. Um, yeah, I just thought it was really interesting. Unfortunately, Pakistan had faced a, the worst flood flooding in its history last year. And it's just really just sad to see that in these 10 years, 10 plus years, we just haven't seen any progress towards uh, changing what's been going on. Um, and I really hope that this graphic novel also inspires kids to research more about what's happening in the world and to try to make a difference. And um, yeah, no, I really enjoyed working on this, uh, this spread. And thank you again, Emma, for having me on. I was contacted by Megan back in 2021 about the graphic novel, and I was so excited. I had known Emma from social media for a while or two through the hashtag and uh, the books that she's worked on. Uh, I have a lot of friends who participated like in Kids Lead for Climate Change too, so it was super exciting. Um, I didn't know about, uh, my, my part was uh, Tocada Ironize, and I didn't know about her until the book, and I was super inspired by her work as well. She started doing activism when she was nine years old. Um, she was, uh, she started uh, the group uh, Respect or Water. It was a campaign against the Dakota Access Pipeline, the, the, the proposed route. And she also uh, worked with Greta Thunberg and they did uh, multiple rallies together in North Dakota and South Dakota through October, 2019. And yeah, as an indigenous person from Mexico, I'm just super inspired by all the, the First Nations like working to protect uh, our beautiful home, the earth. And I've, I've just seen it in Mexico as well, how the uh, First Nations and the original towns here, uh, they are the ones that protect nature the most and they are the ones who get respected the least in every country. So yeah, I just hope that this inspires more kids to uh, yeah, fight for what they believe and to adults too like just get inspired by the kids and just like keep supporting them and fighting for what's right um hi again um my activist was um edgar hang on origin story how did i meet emma i did not i'm so jealous of everyone who knows emma and was aware of it aware of her and her work um 
before the project got started. And yeah, you can definitely see the, the love and the, the networking that exists here. Uh, and I'm happy to be a part of it. Um, and listening to everybody's story so far, it's like sp the sparks of brilliance that come from every story is like they all happen in the shades of humanity. And there's always that contrast of, you know, the innovation comes from the struggle. Um, and, you know, my activist is no different. Um, the floods in his home country um, and watching houses get destroyed when he was 15, you know, gave him the drive. And then when he was walking uh, through one of the garbage dumps, he had this idea of, you know, there's so much of this material that nobody's using. Um, surely there's a way to create, you know, some kind of infrastructure, some kind of housing. Um, and so he did. Um, and 15, you know, that's, that's a teenager, but that's young. Um, and it's so young to, to just decide to change the world. And um, Emma's absolutely right. I had to do like extra research and just fitting all of that into four pages. It's, it's wild. Um, and so I, I definitely advise everyone here and everyone watching to just go read up on um, the amazing lives and the amazing work um, that each of the activists has done. And I'm so proud to have, you know, been partnered with Edgar. Um, I hope I can hang out with him sometime. Um, yeah, that's it for me. On to you. Uh, hey, again. Um, so I too, I didn't, I knew Emma's work, I believe, but I hadn't, obviously I haven't met them because I'm in America. But <laughs> but uh, very excited uh, to join. Uh, I was reached out to, I think my my agent um, was reached out to, and then I, I thought it just seemed really cool um, and something that could be helpful to children and, and and just activism in general. And I'm always kind of looking for ways to do that through my work. Um, so my activist was Jerome Foster II, um, kid from Washington, DC. I'm about 45 minutes away from there uh, and grew up maybe three hours away. Um, so I think I hadn't heard about him beforehand, um, but now, obviously, I in four pages, I, <laughs> I gained a, a wealth of information on uh, just his dedication to to trying to, you know, change the world and but starting so small. And I think I took away most just how like uh, some of our paths can be similar, like at the beginning of the story in the way that he got into it, they were just watching something on TV and and it sparked something in him. And I, I feel like we all can kind of relate to that um, early in our career or whatever sparked us to get us to move and be motivated to, to change our lives and the things around us. So I was just super inspired by how uh, it started from there and then just blossomed into this uh, dedication and career uh, towards just really affecting uh, not only his country, but the rest of the world and trying to, you know, get us to notice what's happening around us and what we can prevent and and make change in uh and to be what the youngest advisor a white house advisor like ever uh a little black kid from <laughs> from dc like that's amazing to me and it really speaks to uh just what you're able to do if you really you know focus and 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 go for something and try to you know make some change and i'm excited to see where he goes and what he does and how he continues to to help all of us really in in ways that we are maybe not able to uh, so yeah, it was really great. And I'm glad to be a part of it and just thankful to Emma for having us all. Hello, my name is Natasha Nayo and I'm one of the proud artists of Drawing to Change the World. The climate activist I worked on was Leah Namgura. She was a young environmental activist in Uganda, was inspired by Greta Thunberg, and wanted to do her own campaign for Fridays for Future in her own community. Fridays for Future is a protest for climate change. Every Friday, her friends, her family, the students will all skip class and join Leah's strikes in the streets. She was going through a lot of controversy, but she believes what she's doing is one way of attracting people and learning about the growth and concerns in Uganda. The deforestation, the mudslides, the extreme weather. As a Ghanaian artist, I really understand what Leah is going through because even in my community, in many African countries, we're going through the same thing over farming, 
uh, land not getting renovated, not restored. Um, every time there's illegal mining, there's deforestation. And Leah is a wonderful example of taking action and wanting to improve an environmental crisis before it's too late. And it was really inspired to what she did. And I'm glad I'm able to be an artist for this project. I thank Emma Reynolds for organizing the graphic novel and reaching out to me. I thank all the artists who work on the climate activists with their beautiful illustrations. The writers, editors who tied in this project together with this wonderful book. And we did it. Thank you so much. Hi. My name is Teo Duval, and I'm the artist for the comic about Jamie Margolin. I'm a queer Latinx person born and raised in Seattle, so when I was presented with the opportunity to illustrate Jamie's biography, I was truly honored. Uh, Jamie represents so many powerful and beautiful aspects of the queer and BIPOC communities in Seattle, and I knew I couldn't pass up an opportunity to share that story and with my own personal twist uh, with sharing a lot of identities that uh, Jamie does. So to be able to draw her story was something I accepted with a lot of personal pride. And I loved working on her comic, especially when I got to draw parts of Seattle and when I got to draw the other founding members of the Zero Hour activist group. I can uh, only hope that the love and pride that I put into the comic shows through to readers. And it was an honor to be a part of this book alongside so many other incredible creators. And I'm very, very excited for readers all around to be able to read this book and share the stories of all of these incredible, powerful, wonderful environmental activists. And hopefully we can inspire more people to join the good fight in protecting our planet. Thank you. How do you make sure to honor the activists you worked on in your artwork? And what does Drawn to, Drawn to Change the World mean to you? That's a really tough one. Um, gosh, yeah. I. Uh, this, she's done so much. They've all done so much. So it was just, okay, so I couldn't fit everything that Greta had done into four, even six pages. So it was just kind of trying to highlight um, those main parts. Um, visually, I tried to be accurate, but within my style um, and still make it cartoony. It's a really hard question that, um, yeah, I just tried to reflect the reality. So I tried to not just have all of the bits where she's, you know, holding the mic. I also wanted to show the parts she struggles with, like she struggles with OCD, she, she's autistic. Um, so that that comes with with its own struggles, um, even though she's very proudly autistic. So, yeah, I wanted to try and fit in some quieter moments um, where she's with her family and when she's like really missing them on the boat and things like that. Um, but yeah, what does the book mean to me? Gosh, it's been a labor of love. <laughs> it it really is like a massive team effort, and I think that's what um, <clears throat> I want to come across is that. Although these are individuals, it's very much not about making it a individual fight um, because that's what harmful systems want us to be, individuals and not unionize and not be communities. So as, as much as these individuals are all highlighted, they're all part of these communities. And I hope that it inspires young people to join one of these groups that already exist you don't have to make a new one and start again like join join these groups um start local think global and um it's not about becoming super famous it's just about being part of the the cogs and and every kind of role is important um so yeah it means it's an opportunity to um say a lot of things not just about uh the activists obviously the the core of the book the heart of the book is these activists but it's also tells people about the science it um has further reading and i hope it's just a useful tool and inspiration to help people on their own activism journey especially um in countries like mine where the government are trying the hardest to not let us protest anymore and we'll put you in prison for painting a sign which has all happened in the last few years. It's very weird uh, time here. Um, so yeah, I think it's even more important that we protest 
in books and use use our voices where we can, especially through art. So I, um, when researching Daphne, I was thinking about just how vocal she is and how unafraid she is. And um, I did just like little, um, some sketches and was thinking about her using her voice and all the different platforms that she has um, uh, gotten herself into and how she, yeah, just really like her, she just seems to have a total lack of fear, which I uh, find so admirable, um, which I admire so much. And so I was thinking about that and um, I wanted to make sure, I don't have the book, but I have, so there was, you know, something from, from the book. So her using her voice, um, talking to large groups of people, which would just kill me, um, but she does it and, and she reaches people and connects with people because she's also just a very kind person. And, and you get that from her, um, that she really cares. And I, I really, um, yeah, I appreciate that about her, that she is, a, a, you know, she's a strong woman and she is um, super caring about others. Um, and so that's that's kind of what I was thinking of when I was putting um, together the work for Daphne, and then that's that's her as well in the bottom, um, just on my iPad. But um, yeah, I uh, other question. Um, what does it mean to me? Um, it it means a whole lot to me to have been involved in the project because I also struggle with how I, what I can do. And like you were saying before, like as an individual, you can only do so much. You, you can, you can encourage other people, you can get into things, but I think it just makes so much more of a difference when you are with others. And um, so I just, I think that's really important is by sharing your voices and making, you know, a chorus of, um, activism right and so and another thing too is just sharing everything with kids like I just feel like every time I have some information I'm always telling my kids or if there is a kid here I am sharing it and they'll probably remember me as like you know that lady who told me some random thing all the time right but I just I I don't like to let those moments pass by where I've seen something really interesting about regenerative farming and I really want them to know about it because you just don't know when those kinds of ideas will take hold. Um, or, you know, I just watched this thing about like a, like a bio uh, digester and how it's a closed loop, closed loop system. And I just think all of this stuff is so fascinating. And when you share these ideas with other people and then they learn about it and share about it, and then we can become um, greater voices by learning more information and um, and and then those things can become movements or you join movements to then make actual changes. Um, so so that's kind of what it, it it means to me is joining a you know, a bigger voice, which is the actual way to to settle. Yeah, very very cool. So the way that I try to honor my activist, Iqbal, in uh, my story um, was that, so in his story, it was mostly about his struggle going against kind of uh, society and like his community of where he was really trying to promote um, climate activism and just like sh telling people like, look, this is going on in our country, but just facing deniers literally everywhere he looked. And I really want to show that struggle of like how hard he was trying to reach people and like him really working towards uh, educating people and working with his community, with his friends and everything to try to tell people. Um, so that was like one aspect of it. The other thing that I really tried to show was that he really saw the beauty in his country in Pakistan, um, but that people were not respecting it, that they were, you know, throwing trash around, they were polluting it and all these things. Um, but he really just wanted, he had like a strong love for nature and that's what he was fighting for. And 
I mean, if you guys don't know, Pakistan is just so beautiful, but that's not what you, this gets portrayed in media. I mean, you all know uh, whenever the global south shows up in movies, it has like that yellow brown filter on it. And like, it's never really a good look. Um, and so I really wanted to show the beauty of this country um, in like the few snippets that I do have of it. Um, but you can see over here and over here that they're trying to work towards. Um, so yeah, I, he really saw the beauty in his country and I tried my best to show that. Uh, then what does drawn to change the world mean to me is that I just think it's such, it's, it's really great. Um, because when I think of changing the world, like usually you think of people, um, go not like me. I don't know. Like when I think of like my drawing, I'm like, oh, I'm just like drawing silly little pictures. Like, what am I really doing here? But it's just nice to know that even like, I mean, like I know art has the power to like, you know, like really change people, but like to think that like children's books that like my silly little drawings could have an effect on people that can make uh, progress, that can convince people to save their planet. And that I think it is very inspiring, especially when you think of how a child, they don't really have much power, you know, but they can draw, they can write, they have, the ability to do these things um and i think it's a really powerful message so something as simple as drawing uh like a little cartoon on on their protest signs or just sharing something in their class i think uh it's a really great message of that um even something as simple as that can uh create change so i really like that i really what everybody is saying uh just very quick um i'm from mexico i'm from michoacan and like like anusha said uh my state is very known just for for the cartel stuff um uh, the war on drugs like all the the crimes happening so it's one of the most beautiful states in mexico and we have wonderful forests the monarch butterflies go there after migrating from canada and it's just like like uh, there's a song that says God changed the paradise and uh, name and put it uh, change it to Michoacan and that's how beautiful it is and just people just know it for the crime and it makes me so sad uh, when uh, there there's this uh, activist his name is uh, Homero Gomez he was well, he protected the the home of the monarch butterflies for all his life and he he disappeared. And it's just like so sad that the people that are trying to make a change, um, they are like being silenced here in Mexico. So yeah, working on this was so important for me, working on Tocada's story. And I tried to honor her by like doing a ton of research about her, about the Sioux tribe, and just like to know, to see how united they are uh, to protect their beautiful land. Um, and yeah, try to show that in some of the backgrounds that I did. And um, yeah, just try to practice drawing hair a lot to get uh, a close likeness. And yeah, so so the book, I uh, just hope it inspires a ton of people just like it has inspired us and especially kids and their parents and to, like Emma said, to work uh, locally to see what's happening, uh, to see what how to protect the parks that are around you, how to Im improve the green spaces. And yeah, just like little by little, like tiny actions can help so much. It was tough uh, trying to honor uh, Edgar. Yeah. Um, I have lots of drawing styles um, for whatever reason, cause like I can't use my, can't use my kid lit art style for like uh, deep, action gore horror um but i feel like some of my best art obviously skews in a different direction and so there was a moment um and i only remembered this while i was drawing uh when i was a kid like obviously you learn about recycling you know in environmental studies and it was that thing of you know don't throw trash on the field put it in your pocket you know until you get to a trash can and then you throw it away or wait until you get home and like between when I decided not to throw the trash on the field and put it in my pocket and, and take it home, like uh, I was shouted at home. It's like, why, why, have you, why have you got so much trash in your pockets? Um, and it's that thing of 
at some point between when you learn about like climate change very early and when you're an adult there's there's something whether it's gradual or it's a sharp drop like there's just a drop in care and so you know reading reading the script and being like that care never left that like that the, the audacity of that care to say i mean i don't think he picked up the trash and it was shattered i don't think he had that experience but i know that there was probably a moment like in deciding i'm going to do something about it and actually making that change um that i was like i have to use multiple of my branches of art styles to to try to convey how cool this is while still appealing um or st- still making the art style appealing to whoever picks up the book and so there's some panels where i'm like let me throw all all of my action knowledge let it be stroked and let me use all of these techniques and others are simple because you know i think the the whole the journey wasn't linear and then like i tried my best to convey that I mean, I like the pages. Obviously, I wouldn't have s- sent them over to him if I didn't like them. Um, but uh, I do hope whoever's picking up the book is inspired that, you know, the story isn't linear, the art isn't linear, and there's so many ways and and so many takeaways uh, of the story. Um, yeah. Yeah, this is literally life-changing, these guys. Um, shout out to, to Big E. Um, yeah. 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 Explaining how uh, how I feel like I guess I honored them is maybe difficult, but not like I tend to focus on like relatability as much as I can in storytelling. And I think the thing that that struck me the most and like obviously I don't know Jerome. Um, I haven't met him. And I guess that that's possible, but I'm honestly not social enough to uh, to reach out to, to people. I'm just, I have anxiety about it. <laughs> uh, but what struck me in his interviews and um, and just in how he seemed as a person was like the joy that he found in doing the work and pursuing the work. And I think I wanted to focus on trying to show that um, in the simplest way possible and how his family was um, important to that process and supportive to that process and encouraging and, uh, you know, able to push him to, to even think that he could do the things that he's doing today. Um, so I think I tried to focus the art in that direction as much as I possibly could and, and just whatever I was trying to say through his story um, in that direction and I hope that I did. Uh, and I think activism uh, or or I guess what, what drawn to change means to me is just um, really trying to, I guess, do your part in the best way that you can. Like, obviously we can't all out be, be out in the streets all the time, um, although it clearly would be beneficial um, to change, uh, but in doing this work and and trying to uh, participate in these types of projects is a way to kind of to reach into that and 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 express yourself and how you feel about it um, as well and just support and solidarity for the people that are out there in the streets and and participating in the fight that you you may not you know be able to in this moment or season of your life uh, and so I hope. I did that and I, I think we all tried to uh and that that was probably what was most important to me in and trying to create the story um and I hope I pulled that off uh America has just like a a laundry list of problems like anywhere else and also backed by people that just like will blatantly in your face tell you that scientific fact is not true and and they just double down on it and it ain't really <laughs> it ain't really no change in that in in certain people uh and that's difficult for, it's difficult for me as an older um, man to to navigate and try to fight against. So I can't imagine how difficult it is for a, a younger child who typically is not thinking about none of that stuff. Like, you know, not predominantly anyway, at 16, 17, you're trying to, you know, have fun, hang out and, and just, you know, but that, that they've taken that weight and put it on their shoulders and really are trying to like make change and be, you know, 
people of this world that care about it and have empathy towards what's going on like that's amazing to me so i can only hope to like try to capture like a, a quarter of that <laughs> a fraction of it in in the art and that's what uh i hope you know we've done and and are able to do in this with this project so. just want to say it was so wonderful hearing you all speak and I didn't actually know how touched you were by the activist because it's publishing's weird and keeps you in these silos and you don't speak to each other um <laughs> but it's just so wonderful um to hear how you connected with your activists and it's just thank you that's really lovely now we're gonna turn it to uh to you all personally can you talk us through your illustration journey as a whole? Do you have some inspirations from favorite books, from favorite comics, and have you always been into comics? So books, uh, I have so many books and it was really hard to just choose a couple, but um, I read um, all the time when I was a really young kid. And then when I was a kid, there was sort of not really YA in middle grade. It just sort of went kids, adult. And I didn't really like the theme of a lot of adult books. So I just stopped reading for a bit. Um, but then when I was a teenager, I found this book in the library, which is a Sandman spin-off, um, Death. Um, I can't remember if it's the title. Yeah, High Cost of Living, but there's also Time of Your Life. And that was um, life-changing for me. I was like, what is this book? And um it wasn't like superheroes it was it's all about the endless and death and dream and I was just like oh my god like my um goth self loved it um yeah it was amazing and um that got me into comics and reading again um my uh, one of my other favorites is fables by sorry light um by Bill Willingham um absolutely love them about people who are from fables and stories and have to live undercover in secret in New York um one of my biggest influences growing up was Raymond Briggs, um, who makes picture books slash comics. So he's like famous for Father Christmas and The Snowman. Um, and also this book I reference a lot when I'm teaching because it's like a masterclass in visual literacy. Um, very dark subject matter, but very important as well. Um, I'm also super influenced by Sean Tan. I absolutely love, love his work um and these beautiful paintings and I love this picture book because it's a wonderful allegory for depression and recovery and second to last one <laughs> Jane um the fox and me by Fanny Britt and Isabel Arsenal it's one of my favorite books of all time um I just I love um Isabel Arsenal's work it's just incredibly incredibly powerful and every time I look at it it's still someone who I'm like I want to be like her when I grow up and it's just continue always always inspires me um and just a big shout out to go with the flow which is about period activism I absolutely love this book and the sequel's coming soon so go buy it Lily's amazing um and does a lot of good stuff um and obviously I have all of your books and I love them <laughs> I have like uh two big bookshelves and I couldn't bring everything over but um yes movie I'll go to the next person yeah, so I, I'm also a shameless book collector and I've had tons of books in my life since I was really little. And I didn't know that I wanted to be an illustrator until I was much older. Um, even though I surrounded myself with all these stories and um, was so hugely influenced by them um, as a kid and then so it was so funny to me later on to realize oh yeah this is what I enjoy doing and and then jumping into it and then um, still have all of my lovely books around me like a hug and I'll just show a few this is um, a really old book from nine, the 1930s it's called Nine Days Till Christmas and it takes place in Mexico um, and it's just absolutely beautiful. And it's probably my favorite book. Um, and it's a, it's a story of um, this little girl, Ceci, and waiting till Christmas and not wanting her piñata to be broken. Um, it's, very, it's very sweet and the illustrations just melt me. Um, I'm a big fan of... Um, other ones from my childhood are like um, the Albergs, 
peach peach pear plum. I think it's so fun to um <clears throat> as a kid to just find things on pages. It just it never gets old. And uh I quote this all the time. My kids are like teenagers now and they don't care. They put up with me. Um corduroy always a favorite. Um another um artist from quite a while ago, Adrian Adams. Um uh, authored illustrator um, illustrated several books including this one about the easter egg artist and um i just find her work sublime um always incredible there's some really fun ones about halloween um and a couple of my other favorites maybe more of like from nowadays um uh, beatrice alemania i like books about imagination and playfulness, thoughtfulness, um, showing kids just doing things in their natural habitat, you know? Um, All the World is a lovely story about families and caregivers, and there's so much to see in the book. Marla Frazee is an incredible illustrator. Um, I also like Arsenault, Isabel Arsenault, and Mac Barnett's stories are always fun. This is a really wonderful one, um, just expanding on, you know, the whole thing with imagination and all the things in your head that you can think of. Um, and and the back and forth between telling stories and, um, and all the possibilities from stories. Um, and then a couple of other ones, Mark Majewski. This is a beautiful book about the earth. Does earth feel? I love his work. Um, Be a Tree, illustrated by Felicita Sala. And um, this is a really, really great book um, for kids that I think is enjoyable and to learn more about nature. Um, and then another good one, popular one in my house always, um, Sector 7 from David Wiesner. Um, it's, uh, I think, yeah, it's a wordless book. and. Um, there's always a, a place for that in my heart. I love um, all kinds of genres, but where like nonfiction, imagination, and playfulness come together um, really gets me. And so, yeah, um, and this was the first time I got to work on something that was um, in a different form. You know, normally I'm working as a as in picture books. And so this was a unique challenge and so much fun and um yeah, expanded my thoughts. Like, I wonder, I don't know if I'll keep going with that, but it definitely got me thinking. And yeah, thanks, Emma. <laughs> so uh, for me, like my illustration journey, like I've always been in uh, picture books. I mean, like as a kid, I, and even now I love reading. Um, every year for Goodreads, you can kind of uh, do a little challenge to uh, read as many books as you can. So Last year I did 30, this year I'm trying to do 30. I'm already at 28. So if you guys have any recommendations, I might be able to go a little bit over. But when I was younger, I either, I knew I wanted to be an author. And then once I learned what being an illustrator was, I'll be like, oh wait, no, I'll be an illustrator. And then somehow I've kind of like back um, cycled into doing both. But um, I've always been into picture books. Um, and more recently, I've been getting more into graphic novels and learning as much as I can. I really want to do my own graphic novel one day. And I also felt that this project was a good way to kind of like dip my toes into this genre and see if I liked it, see like what my uh, kind of process would be like. Because um, picture books and graphic novels, even though they are both similar ways of storytelling in terms of like using art to tell story, um, they're very different in terms of uh, like how precious you can be, I suppose. Um, with picture books, you can get with 32 pages, you can get really uh, in depth with the artwork and everything and spend a lot of time with graphic novels. I really had to uh, try not to, let me see if I can find my pages, um, not be so precious and so loving with all of my pages, even though it was only four pages that I did in the end. Um, just, 
yeah, I knew like people are only going to be looking at one frame for a second and I couldn't spend that much time on it. Um, but it was a really fun thing to work on in terms of like inspiration. I um, have brought up a couple of books that I'm a really big fan of. Uh, even though this project that I worked on was done digitally, I've mostly been a digital artist for most of my career. I've gotten more into traditional painting. That's actually my current book that I'm working on in the background, which I'm traditionally painting. So that's kind of what I'm quite inspired by. Um, here are a couple of my favorite books. Um, traditionally done, this is School's First Day of School by Adam Rex and Christian Robinson, my favorite duo and my favorite picture book. I think I'm really drawn to um, like this very mid-century simple style of illustration and in terms of story, just like the innocence of childhood and just really simple stories of imagination and just, um, I really love this book. It's basically the story of a school's first day of school and being worried of whether his kids are going to love him or not. Um, and then there's like a kid who's like drawing on his walls and, you know, he's just really nervous about it. So thought it was a really interesting way to uh, to interpret that for a kid who might be nervous about their first day. Uh, another favorite combination, Lemony Snicket, who was my favorite author when I was growing up and Matthew Forsyth, who is one of my favorite illustrators, just absolutely beautiful work. And again, very creative concept. And then lastly, another illustrator who I love, uh, Hoda Hadadi, uh, written by Reem Pariki, who I've worked with previously. Um, she works with uh, tissue paper, which I think is so brilliant. And uh, just like the amount of detail is really crazy. Uh, I was so inspired by her. This book that I'm working on does use tissue paper, which I'm never doing again. Um, but yeah, love her work. Just love how creative people can be with different mediums. Um, and this graphic novel was really fun medium. Um, and I really hope I get the chance to do more stuff like this in the future. But yeah, a little peek into my process. Hi again. Uh, well, I always like picture books as well um and but i was very inspired by uh, manga growing up and also um this comic uh which that we will get uh sometimes in magazine stands in mexico and i i loved it so much i will buy every volume and they came with like tiny gifts as well and it was like like necklaces and earrings and i was just so happy to read it every month uh, but yeah, I love manga, like Fruits Basket, and this is my first time like doing uh, art for a graphic novel, like the drawings and the whole thing uh, for, for the pages that I did. Uh, I've worked in uh, graphic novels before, but as a coloring uh, artist. This is uh, Santa Superhero by Kaden, Kaden Phoenix. And uh, the drawings are done by Eva Cabrera, and they are very pretty. And, and yeah, so I did the color. And uh, yeah, I, oh, I, I wish I to be a children's book illustrator and an artist when I was younger. I didn't know that was a possibility. I, just, I wanted to be a doctor and an engineer like my mom and my dad. Like I wanted to be both things at the same time. And then uh, I found out that I could study animation and then I found that I could study illustration. And I, I'm just in my, like, my colleagues and friends and to see what they are doing and then be like, oh, maybe I can do that too. So one of my biggest inspiration is Mirel Ortega. She's an author and illustrator. Uh, she's from Mexico too. Hi, Mirel, I love you. This is her second book, uh, River of Mariposas. And it's, um, sorry, I have some pictures in there. But it's, it's so pretty. Um, her first book as well, Magic. Uh, it's so cute. You should all check it out. She actually did a uh, real paper butterflies for for this one, and then scanned them and put them in the book, and it's just like very very pretty. Uh, so yeah, she's one of my biggest inspirations. Also, uh, Clarkin, I just like love like like I know she had to like the 
how we get started in animation and then we're like well but children's books are so lovely as well and we just like jump back and forth so this is also a very beautiful book uh, by her I also I, I'm very inspired by all women who are moms and also keep doing art so I I always felt like I had to choose between having a career and uh, ha being a mother. I'm not sure if I want to be a mother anymore, but for different reasons. But there's just so much respect for women and men who take care of children and then keep doing uh, art. And this is another one of my favorite ones. It's a uh, white, but it's uh, the Spanish version by Emily Hitch. Just, the art is so pretty and the, the story is very beautiful as well. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It's beautiful, beautiful artwork. And I'm so happy that we're all sharing the books that we like. I'm already like making my shopping list and updating it. Uh, there's going to be, a, if anybody is ever interested in coming to Mexico, the book fair in Guadalajara is insane. It happens in uh, late November, early December. And it's just like, one of the best uh, book fairs in Latin America, or maybe even the world, one of the best ones. So yeah, everyone's invited. <laughs> I'll take you up on that invite. Absolutely. Um, if I can find travel accommodations. Um, me, process, inspirations. Um, uh, just like Gloria, I'm on the manga, anime um, side. Like obviously watch cartoons when I was younger, but there was just something my first anime was like uh, in the States, it's called Samurai X. Everyone else is called like Rurouni Kenshin. And I was like, oh, this isn't a cartoon. Like I knew it was animated, but I knew it wasn't a cartoon. Like, and that, like I was young, but I was like, there's something, I have to find new words to define this thing. And like anime wasn't a word yet because I just watched it on TV. Um, and then lots and lots and lots of manga, so much. Um, and then uh, if I have to name them, we'll be here all day. Uh, you know, the, the big three, Naruto, Bleach, One Piece, everything else. Just as, assume, if you know it, I've read it. That's just what it is at this point. Um, and uh, yeah, really happy that Webtoons is now a thing um, for authors to just be like, yeah, I might not get a publisher, but the story is in me and I, I need it to live. Um, and so seeing seeing like amateur creators, like professional creators and like, obviously now a big um the big two jumping onto webtoons and being like you know everybody's here let's let's jump on the webtoon party um it's been dope so like with webtoons i can give you examples because i don't read that many um i will definitely recommend lookism um how to fight it yes it's about fighting but you must go go read it you will you'll feel what i felt if if there's been times i cried while reading uh, a webtoon it was it was during those two um they really know how to just make backstories of characters um with my process because i've read so much manga and i didn't study art at all uh color is such a big hurdle for me so i'll put down the line art and i'll be like cool time to suffer um and if you look at the pages that i did um it's not that i'm it's not that I'm any less or more intentional than someone who's a colorist. It's just, I will look at something and be like, what is the color meaning? It doesn't, can't just look cute. Um, Cause that's how you get muddy colors. I don't know what's clashing or not. I tried, I tried, uh, the deadline is today. I'm sending over the file, we're both crying. That's that's the process. Um, but for these pages in particular, I wanted to go with um, uh, some purples with the initial pages. Cause that's the, the uncertainty and the struggle. I wanted to like, put so many colors that your eyes can't pick pinpoint on one place, at least on the first page. And then as you go through his developmental process, like there's like huge blocks of green and that's, you, that, you know, that's his evolution phase. And then when you get to the goals, that's his success. Um, and then even uh, with the, like there's a, there's a like industrial reds to say like, yeah, there's still work to do. Like it's not a, it's not a pause, it's not a stop, but it's like in contrast with every other color. And then the last panel has all the colors because it's like, yes, you know, we're winning, but there's, there's still effort, um, there's still muddiness, because like it's, it doesn't end, like there's still so many things to conquer. Um, 
even in saying that, am I sure about what I'm saying? Because I'm not a colorist, guys. Yo, as soon as it's time to color, I, I cry. I cry. Um, and I think that's about it. Um, but, like, obviously, uh, the books that uh, are on this list, I'm going to rewatch this because I wasn't taking notes. Um, but, yeah, definitely read Lookism and How to Fight. Trust me. Trust me. Uh, never before have I related to the color uh, dilemma. <laughs> so, I go through much of the same. It's so much easier for me to draw. I, I could do that. And, um, but on to inspiration. Um, I kind of wanted to get some more books, but um, as you can see, I have a whole fleet of them behind me uh, and I can't find what I was looking for. But um, one person in particular is Bill Pete. Uh, He's an old Disney animator. I think he was one of the original nine old dudes. Uh, but um, this book in particular isn't necessarily my favorite, but like just uh, in general, one, I love the way that uh, whole like story and it's not, um, you know, it's not just one or two lines. It's like a real uh, thing going on. Uh, most of them are about animals, you know, uh, and it's just cute and, and just, uh, I feel like the freedom in, in the way he expresses like his line quality and stuff, um, just pen and simple. Uh, I assume it's pastel. I haven't actually looked into that. Um, it's either pastel or color pencil, I would say, but like, it looks like pastel. Um, but it's almost got like this storyboard quality to it that um, is just really loose and fun and and not just like tied to, to being perfect. Um, I like the imperfection in it, I guess you could say. It makes it um, pop more to me. And uh, another thing, like, I don't think people would really, like, think this of me, but, like, uh, book-wise, Ella Enchanted is actually my my joint. Um, <laughs> and I'm really into, like, storytelling and, like, slice-of-life stuff and trying to bring, like, fantasy and sci-fi and all that other stuff that um, into it. And I just, like... There's a twist in that story that just like sent me um, and it made me feel like how I think I would have felt had I read it as a child. And I took from that um, kind of what I wanted to do going forward in my work. And I think I'm kind of like on the opposite end, having done more comics rather than uh, like picture books and stuff. And now trying to get into that world somewhat. Um, uh, like what was said before, comics are really hard. You really have to pull back a lot of detail and and things that you want to express in an effort to to make it work sometimes. Uh, and coloring them, like Bill was saying, is a, a whole nother beast. Um, so doing this story, like, you know, trying to condense it to four pages and, and simplifying it all, like that was a, a challenge. <laughs> but also like uh, another reminder that, oh yeah, you can you can still, you can still reach people in like these short brief moments because currently I'm trying to write like two graphic novels at the same time and I feel like so tied to all this long form storytelling and like doing this brought it back to remembering that you can tell really fun short stories um and that actually kind of leads into like probably my other inspiration was just like my peers around me and like the the smaller press independent comics scene the inspiration that just came from all these books that you would probably not see outside of that space or like being online and just like, you know, searching it out and knowing people. And all that has just like pushed me even further too, I think. Um, I had to pinpoint like a specific book. Um, this was our pact. Um, dang, I, I'm blanking out on the dude's name right now. Um, but that book really changed the way I looked at comics too, because it, it made me really want to like, at some point do a whole traditionally drawn comic, which would be insane, but I do want to try it. <laughs> um, and that book really sparked that. And and it also showed me that you can just, you can really tell stories about anything and you can make it interesting and fun for children and adults alike. And if you don't overthink it, you know, you can, you can the possibilities are endless. So yeah. Um, I'm glad that this was our pack ended with you because that's one of my all-time favorites. It's so good. And it's by Ryan Andrews. 
definitely, definitely check it out. Yeah. Apologies, Ryan, for forgetting. Yeah. <laughs> no worries. It's it's such an amazing graphic novel. But yes, a lot of these I am familiar with, but same as everyone has said, I'm making my list to check all of these out and get them on our shelves at Second Star. So I'm really excited. To end the panel, what last message do you have for everyone to give them hope of how they can make a change to start making that change, whether it is through art, through their words, what's your final message to them? Uh, there's some resources in the back, which kind of have, that's, that's what I'd say, read through them. Um, but I definitely start with um, Ayanna Elizabeth Johnson's climate Venn diagrams and fill it in yourself so that you specifically, you find out what you want to do. So one of them is for, what bothers you one is what am I good at and um a third one and then in the middle is like that's why you're fighting specifically um it has to be something you're interested in it has to be something that um you can do over a sustained period not in short bursts and don't do it alone because you will burn out and then it's not sustainable so join a community group if you're old enough to vote do that and then find your why and why you want to help specifically I just also wanted to say um, that you're not alone and don't lose hope um, because there are a lot of people around you that care deeply. And I have definitely gone through times where you have, I don't know what it's called, I forget, like climate doom, like you just feel horrible about the state of the world in many different ways. And it's really sent me into a funk where I just, I'm just, it's upsetting, um, especially when you have kids and you just start to look in the future and you wonder how things will go. Um, but it's really not, I found helpful to spend time in that frame of mind because it, it really just brings you down. And so try not to dwell on those places, but rather find places where you can get energy and joy and feel um, hopeful. And, um, and, and that usually involves like talking to other people and, um, joining other people to do helpful things. And like Emma was saying, when it's meaningful to you and it's something you enjoy, um, then it becomes something you're passionate about. Um, and so finding those things out is, is like the first step, um, to, to knowing what to do next. So, yeah, but we're in it together. I'll just speak from like the art side of things. I think the reason that Kid Lit for Climate really took off was that uh, connection with the art because art is just, it's something that um, it's so accessible. It's something that like anyone um, can enjoy that they can either through, whether that's like visual arts or like reading or anything like that. And if you feel like you are a creative person and you are wondering like, how can I help out? That is, art is like one of the ways that you can, um, whether by creating um, art that is in inspired by uh, climate activists, like what we're doing right now, um, creating infographics, creating stories of uh, what's going on around you. Um, and sharing that with your community online and things like that. Even like, because I, as, as I was saying before, like you might think that like, oh, it's just like my little doodles, but it was it going to do like, you'll be surprised about the impact that it can have on others around you. Um, so if you are trying to think of something that you can do, I think this can be something that is uh, that's something you can try out. I agree with everything that's been said. Uh, art is such a powerful tool. Uh, think in community, talk to your friends about it, maybe set up a little bit show, uh, uh, a little show about the things that you want to share with more people and that you want more attention for. And yeah, just keep doing tiny little things, things that you can keep doing over time, just small things like trying not to waste food, trying not to waste like the fruits you get that people put a ton of work in like uh, harvesting and all that. And then it gets transported to different cities and just like eating it, it's such a great way to help with the, everything. Uh, so yeah, just don't lose the hope. All of the closing notes that I'm trying to come up with in my head uh, spiraling into like the next 30 minutes of discussion. 
Um, and so maybe I'll stick with my comfort zone, which is fiction. Um, time travel is always such a big concept, especially now. Um, and there's always that, oh, if you go back in time, you step on a butterfly and the future absolutely changes. Um, you're now, you're here now. We don't need the time travel. We're here with the butterflies. The, the small change you make today alters the future radically. All your small efforts do accumulate and snowball into something grander and greater. And like everyone said, like if you put all of your effort into changing time, it's, you get horrible repercussions. Um, and we end up in a post-apocalyptic world. But the utopia is in right now, in you watching this, in you discussing this, in you picking up that trash and putting it in your pocket, in you reading about the kinds of audacity that each of the the activists here have have started and have continued. Um, can't wait until this is you in the future where there's another set of artists drawing about what you're doing, what what's your interest, what's you know, your game changer. And at the end of the day, the game changes in the mirror. So yeah. Uh I find myself to, to joy when thinking about trying to press on and uh and take on these things that are like so heavy sometimes like and i think i would suggest if you can if you can find that if you can find the things that you can still press on with even when the difficulty comes and and the the deck is stacked against you and and you can still find the the want and the desire to do the work then i i think that's best if you want to make changes and you don't know how uh, I think what Emma was saying earlier about really finding what you would be best at I believe that's really important um, because you'll be the best um, you know you'll be the best asset in doing things that you like you should try new things and you should step out and, and not be afraid to to pursue stuff that you would be scared of but like there's also really a lot of uh and goodness and, and and focusing on what you're what you're best at and what you can most be you know contribute to to a thing and and then that to me you know leads past the happiness into the joy if you can if you can find it uh and so i say generally you know don't overthink it uh get information it's always kind of the biggest barrier to me uh in anything and and like bill was saying do the little things pick up the trash, man. Uh, eat. <laughs> Don't waste the food. Like, just pay attention to the small stuff that does add up because just your existence is important and, and helpful. As, as long as you're here, then you can make a difference. So, um, or you can at least influence someone in the future to make that difference if you can't be here, you know. Um, I think if you focus on that and, and, and try to just uh, prepare yourself for the, for the long term, of, of a fight because like none of this stuff is short it's not gonna go away like we gotta we gotta live together we gotta work together and we gotta make it all change together um so use your community well don't use them but you know <laughs> find support there find find what you need you know and and try to be reciprocate that too at the same time so i think we focus on all that uh you know you'll get there uh but it's hard it's supposed to be but it doesn't mean we can't do it. So that's what I think. I just want to say one more thing about, um, just to finish about how art and imagination is one of the most powerful tools we have. And there's a few quotes about that in the book about how um, we've got all of these ideas of future technology, but we need a way to tie it together. And that's why I invite people to draw a hopeful future. And there's, there's a lot of kind of, doomism around that these oppressive systems want you to think but what we really need to do is imagine this this future and kind of manifest it into reality and art, art has the power to do that um i'm just going to end on a quote um by the founder of black girl environmentalists um she says it is the goal of oppressive systems to make us feel hopeless to take away our joy to steal our imagination and imagination is such a powerful tool it's not childish or irrelevant it is actually one of the greatest solutions to imagining a more sustainable, equitable future. So yeah.
Thank you so much for joining us, everybody.